Oh. I didn't see there. Caught me doing some research. Let me finish lunch. And then we'll take a, a closer look. Okay. So what we're going to do here... Uh, I, I almost finished my lunch, sorry. Is take a look at Zach's plane. And we have endless access to this, thanks to YouTube. We don't live in a time where we can only hear Zach on record. And don't get me wrong... Listening to Zach on record is important. I think that is a accessible way to listen to the patterns he's doing, although they're very complex and he switches things around so fast that it can be hard to follow. If you listen to it enough, and I'll put my amount of hella plays right here, <coughs> not as like a weird flex, just to show you, I'm constantly ingesting his playing in hopes of better understanding it. He's one of those rare drummers where on the first, third, fifth, tenth time listening to him playing a song, you aren't going to know what he's doing. You, you just, you can't. He, again, he moves very, very fast. His patterns move really quickly. Uh, he has odd trash cymbals. He, he tunes his toms down so it's hard to know where he's hitting. But here, and I, I have the Gillum Street 80803 set pulled up, and I highly recommend you watch this because the camera almost always has Zach in frame. There, there's great, like I said, great footage everywhere, but I really like this recording because we get a good view of Zach's kit. And they're playing Women of the 90s, and I'm at about the 11 minute mark. So I'm going to play just 10, 15 seconds of this make some comments about it, and then we'll see if we can take what I've noticed and move it to our own kit, okay? So here we go. We'll do about 20 seconds. <laughs> Okay, and I'm really happy we got to that part where he is going on the toms um, and then over to the snare and the hi-hat. What I want to focus on is not necessarily the patterns that Zach is playing. Because like I said, that it's tough. He, he's very unique. He obviously grinds these songs so much into the ground to the point where... You know, he's optimized every single section of the song, hours and hours and hours. And eventually, as a drummer, you and I, when we're playing with our friends or we're writing our own songs, we have to choose or make that decision of this song is done. This part is written. Because you can always scrutinize and go over and go over and, and think, what can I fit here? What can I fit here? How can I change this? How can this part build? And eventually, you just got to choose. So I don't want to focus on the part itself. I want you to watch how Zach's hands are moving. Maybe I'll, I can commentate over it here. I'm at 1114. So the area in which Zach's hands are moving is really a small box. Zach's a very physical player, but he's still very efficient in the way he's moving because he understands with all the repetitions that he's done that all he needs to do is sit there and move his hands in this box. And what I mean by that is every drum, every cymbal is very, very accessible. He's not overreaching. He's not, you know, back in the 80s and 
in early 90s, there's a lot of tendency to put symbols way up high. He avoids that and puts everything on almost a singular plane, right? He doesn't have to reach. He doesn't have to bend over to hit things. He can sit back and, believe it or not, be pretty relaxed. And again, he's physical, so it may not seem that way. But in between hits or when his left arm or right arm, and this is rare because it's always mo- they're always moving, he just, they're resting at his side, right? His natural position is here, and then he comes up, and he's playing here, okay? So there's a very small box in which he's moving his arms, and that becomes very apparent the more you watch Zach play. So now that we know this, I'm going to try to go get a nice drum angle in here, hopefully an overhead, and add a bit of depth to this show you maybe a couple patterns I've written myself so we can start to understand this, I'll call it, you know, box theory sort of that I'm talking about. Okay, we've made our way to the kit. I'm going to put this there for now. So here's the box. You see it. I hope you see it. Right here. So my hands, and if you want to, instead of a box, call it a a uh, pentagon because technically if you draw a shape you know don't worry about the bass drum for now my hands only have to move this much so my hands are not going over here my hands are not going over here and a common mistake I think a lot of drummers make is they expand their kit before they expand their scale and I'm not telling you what to do. If you want to have a 15-piece kit, if you have the means for a 15-piece kit, have at it. But even with my band, for example, with weed, with the weed with the apostrophe, that is, I don't even use a high tom. But for the sake of this, you know, and kind of trying to mirror in a way what Zach does, this is his typical setup, although he'll he'll have a trash here sometimes or maybe an extra symbol. We're keeping things simplistic. That forces you to think more creatively. You don't have 15 sounds to go to. You only have six. So what I'll do real quick is, is play a bit and or, or find a section here that I want to play. And we'll keep the box kind of theory in mind. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to start by drawing a triangle. Okay, so within the box, you're going to draw or you have the ability to draw multiple shapes. Here, here, that's a triangle, right? So it's really just about learning how to, and this is a lot of what Zach does, he'll take a triangle like that and throw a pattern on it. And again, I don't want you focusing too much on patterns. Think of of shapes for now. And then you can go back and think, oh, well, do I want to play four beats here and then move to here? Do I want to do kind of what I was doing there where I'm where I'm hovering over all three almost. And then you can start to add in those other elements. And you can do, so there's a triangle here. There can be a triangle here. You can have a box here, right? So. that's that's two triangles that are merging together and then of course there can be a triangle here and on and on it goes triangle All right. 
So the last thing, allow me to kind of move into the shot here. All right. <laughs> so what Zach gets really, really good at, okay, is understanding each shape and knowing you can go one way with the shape, reverse the shape, switch the shape to other elements, all while staying within that box. Hopefully this sheds some light on what Zach does. His playing is a puzzle. It takes a long time to figure out. But I hope this was of some use to you. And I'll see you when I see you. Thank you for watching.